Today in this lecture we are going to discuss effects of sympathetic discharge on blood flow during exercise. Like what are the effects of sympathetic nervous stimulation on the blood flow regulation during exercise. Basically we have started our new chapter about muscle blood flow and cardiac output during exercise coronary circulation and ischemic heart disease. So far we have discussed the muscle blood flow in normal condition and during exercise. Similarly, we have discussed the local and nervous system regulation of the blood flow. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss the effects of sympathetic nervous system or the discharge of sympathetic system on the blood flow during exercise. We have uh, discussed again and again in our previous lectures as well that whenever a person starts exercise, exercising, muscles, the muscles in the human body starts consuming more nutrients and oxygen. Muscles in the human body starts consuming more oxygen and other nutrients so the demand, the demand for the nutrients increases. Now, normally in the normal circumstances, the amount of blood flow to the muscles is sufficient for the normal demands of the muscles. But when the exercise starts, when a person starts exercise, the demand increases because muscles are actively being used and the demand increases specifically in those muscles which are actively involved in muscles. So to, so to uh, basically to fulfill the demands of the muscles to supply more nutrients and uh, oxygen to the muscles, there are few readjustments. There are few readjustments in the blood flow which basically increase the blood flow to the muscles. Now in our last lectures we discussed that there are two main mechanisms. One is basically the local mechanism and the other is nervous system. Today we are going to discuss in detail the sympathetic discharge which is basically a nervous mechanism to help increase the supply of oxygen and other nutrients to the exercises exercising muscle. So Whenever there is activation of sympathetic system or whenever there is sympathetic discharge or mass sympathetic discharge or sympathetic discharge in the whole body, there are few changes that occur in the human body which will help to fulfill the, the increased demand of the muscles. Now the most important changes are increase in the heart rate and increase pumping strength of the heart. So for example, if this is the heart and this is the circulation, blood is coming to the uh, heart is basically pumping the blood into the body and then blood is coming back into the heart. So the, 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 the amount of blood that is the heart that the heart is pumping is cardiac output and the amount of blood that is returning to the heart is venous return. So, during exercise, the sympathetic nervous system gets activated and the nerves, the sympathetic nerves, they activate the heart. They activate the heart. So, the heart rate, the heart rate increases. The normal heart rate is around 70 and it may increase up to around 110 or 120 or even 150 or more. So, the increased heart rate helps in pumping more and more blood towards the muscles. This is one mechanism, mechanism which basically increases the blood flow to the muscles so that the demand, the increased demand of the muscles can be fulfilled. The second thing is that the pumping strength due to sympathetic stimulation of the heart, the power, the power or the force with which the heart is pumping increases. So heart pumps more blood and it pumps blood more effectively. So more blood, again more blood comes to the muscles and the demand of the muscles can be fulfilled. Now this is something which is happening at the level of the heart. But these sympathetic nerves, these sympathetic nerves which are coming from the brain,
the sympathetic nerves which are coming from the brain they not only innervate the heart but they also innervate the blood vessels they innervate the blood vessels so they innervate the artery arteries and the veins and most most importantly they innervate the arterioles arterioles basically the the blood vessels the arteries or the small arteries known as the arteriole that are coming to the muscles they get contracted they get contracted with the help of norepinephrine at this level at the level of nerves there is secretion of norepinephrine nor epinephrine nor epinephrine basically con contracts it cause contraction of the arterioles that are that are taking blood to the muscles so due to contraction of the peripheral arterioles due to contraction of the peripheral arterioles blood supply blood flow to those muscles blood flow to those muscles which are not needed blood flow to those muscles which are not needed is decreased so due to contraction of the arterioles the blood flow to some muscles is decreased and those muscles which are not actively involved which are not actively involved and this contraction this contraction of the arterioles is with the help of norepinephrine norepinephrine has its receptors on the arterioles but these receptors are are not present in the coronary and cerebral these the receptors for norepinephrine are not very much abundant in the coronary vessels the vessels which are supplying blood to the heart muscles and cerebral vessels cerebral vessels the vessels which are supplying blood to the brain so blood flow that is decreased to some muscles during exercise will not be decreased blood flow will not be decreased to the heart and to the brain because norepinephrine receptors are not present in arterioles that are supplying to the heart and the brain but other vessels other vessels that are supplying blood to those muscles which are not involved which where the blood is not needed during exercise will decrease so this blood the blood that is not needed it will also return it will also return to those places it will also re return or go to those places where it is needed in simple words some of the muscles with will lend their blood to the places where it is needed it is because the muscles which are actively involved in exercise they have more vasodilators they have more vasodilators and we discussed in our previous lecture that vasodilators are basically decreased oxygen increased carbon dioxide potassium atp lactic acid these are vasodilators so the the muscles which are more exercising or where there is more need for the nutrients they have more vasodilators instead of norepinephrine action epinephrine is secreted there epinephrine or sympathetic nerves innervation is occurring even at uh, in those muscles where blood uh, where more nutrients are needed where more blooded blood is needed but the amount of vasodilator in those muscles is very much high so the norepinephrine is not able to cause contraction and it is not able to decrease blood to those specific muscles so the blood is basically diverted from those muscles where it is not needed to those muscles where it is needed and this is due to the sympathetic discharge with the help of sympathetic nerves due to the and mostly due to contraction of the peripheral arterioles with the help of norepinephrine which is secreted 
which is secreted from the sympathetic nerves. Finally, the sympathetic discharge, sympathetic discharge during exercise will lead to contraction of the veins and increase in the mean systemic filling pressure. Now, here we discussed that the heart is pumping blood which is known as cardiac output. But the, but the same amount of blood is also returning to the heart which is known as venous return. Now this venous return is mostly coming in the veins. And the veins are basically like sick. They cannot contract like arterioles. So the sympathetic discharge basically leads to uh, basically leads to innervation of the veins lead to innervation of the veins and where there is norepinephrine is secreted and this norepinephrine cause contraction of the veins as well as it caused contraction of the arterioles as it caused contraction of the arterioles in those muscles where blood was not needed Similarly, it will cause contraction of the large veins. It will cause contraction of the large veins. And by contraction of the large vein, it will just help to push blood. It will help to push blood towards the heart. So more blood will come towards the heart. And in Frank Starling mechanism, we discussed that when more blood is coming to the heart, more blood is pumped out of the heart so when more blood is pumped out of the heart it goes the, the uh, it goes the blood flow to the exercising muscle also increases so the effects of sympathetic discharge on blood flow during exercise are the effects on heart include the increase in heart rate and increasing the pumping strength due to secretion of the norepinephrine from the sympathetic nerves similarly the contraction of the arterioles in the peripheral muscles lead to contraction of the arter uh, contraction of the peripheral arterioles in the perif uh, in the uh, in the muscles where blood is not needed leads to it leads to lending of that blood lending of that blood where it is not needed to those muscles where it is needed for example blood is not needed in liver and it is needed in the brain so the the blood vessels the blood vessels in the liver will contract so that more blood can go to the brain so it is just like lending its blood to the part where it is needed finally contraction of the veins contraction of the veins will lead to increase in the mean systemic filling pressure the pressure which is pushing the blood or forcing the blood or helping the blood to move toward the heart it will increase the venous return and increasing the venous return will also lead to increase in cardiac output and all these factors will help in increase blood supply to the exercising muscle and these are the effects of sympathetic discharge on blood flow during exercise